You hear him stomping his feet? Yeah, I was wondering what that was, actually. That's him demanding more food. I Do thought it again, was a dancing kind of thing happening. No, now he imitates me. <laughs> <laughs> it just start, it's like all of a sudden. Dude. I love how you, attentive you are to him. I was definitely not that attentive with my first son at that age. I was in grad school, and uh, I would be writing papers, and it was more like this. <laughs> yeah. Explains a lot, Chris Cook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a robust time. It was a robust time. Yeah. I think I've gotten better as a dad. You know, we'll see. We'll see. Well, now so, look at all the great quality time you have with your kids. Yeah, no, it's true. I've actually, uh, it has been good. Since being back in New York, it's been better for sure. But, uh, um, yeah, the, uh, Joe just like looks at him, and, like constantly making face of it. It's very cute, Joe. That's why I think you're. James is the most, well, I think Maria might be the most popular character, then James, then Ruthie, then the rest of us, I think, in some order after that, probably. Yeah. We do a poll. You know what, we every day when I sit there and I look at you with your son, I think, like, what actually a great opportunity this is for you that most people, or most fathers, at least, do not get. Yeah, yeah. that's the, the silver lining, you know? You got to find it. You know, and, and I was the same as you, Chris, when my kids were, I, I didn't go back to school teaching until my kids, my twins were like four or five. And at that point, it was like life was crazy. So now, like this time spending, having dinners with my kids, it's, I, I really do feel like I kind of got it back, you know, because I'm spending quality time like that, even though it wasn't when they were little, but it's a nice feeling. Yeah, I've heard that a little bit from people with, you know, 20-somethings or teenagers that it's just like, wow, the, the silver lining around some of, the, some of these experiences. And it's just very unique. And no generation before has had this kind of extended period where you're, you know, more or less mandated to be with your people. So, yeah, it's good stuff. Man, big so, silver lining. Yep. He knows a lot more about Hot Pog than he ever thought he would. <laughs> he's, been, he's on every meeting. He listens. <laughs> Um, nice, nice sweatshirt. I'm gonna see if I can bring up a photo of my daughter as we're doing this with uh, with her sweatshirt on. But it's same same one, Joe. We'll see. Let's go. Um, all right, everybody. It is Friday, May 29th. This is the last school day in May. Uh, June 1st. That means is on Monday, and then we are into June. Uh, last week, I put some announcements out about the end of the year. We will continue to communicate those. Today, I will likely put out a, a, a brief announcement about the end of the year, uh, a video later on today, and we'll uh, incorporate a message there. And then it's more likely that I follow up on Monday with another communication related to uh, graduation end of the year stuff. Um, we had been hoping for to kind of learn some things. I get Cuomo talked a little bit yesterday about uh, you know the phases and where, where people are at. So we're trying to digest that data. I'm not sure we'll be able to kind of put out an, an announcement before the end of the day that is of tremendous substance and probably need the weekend a little bit to kind of get our thoughts organized. But I, I can promise you we are working tirelessly on trying to put together as, as high quality of an end of year experience as we can for all of our students, in particular our seniors. Um, and then we also uh, simultaneously have the challenge of trying to think through what the fall will look like uh, and uh, you know how we will make an, a return to school um, as as smooth as possible uh, in whatever format we're asked to kind of consider there. So thank you for being patient with us. If you're watching the show, thank you for being a regular. There's no way you're watching this random show on May 29th and you're not a regular. So thank you so much. Uh, we, uh, we're, in, we're in contract negotiations with um, different districts who are interested in, in following this format and having us broaden our, our, our scope. So we'll see uh, if we can broaden the show to other districts. That's, that's uh, you know, no, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. But people have, I think, enjoyed that, uh, the show generally. So, so awesome. Without further ado, let's get people coming on and saying hello, J-Dubs. Good morning, Hop Hog. Happy Friday. And um, I can't believe May is over already. It's going to be June. There's no meme for that. But no, it's going to be May. You're, we'll you're make ridiculous. one. Ridiculous. I love it. That's uh, awesome. May is over and it's going to be June. Yes. Profound, yes. J Dubs. <laughs> and and Mr. Cook, I just want to say, you know, imitation is the best form of flattery. 
All the other districts want to be Hop Hog, but that's they can't exactly. be us. That's they can't exactly. be us. Good morning, Hop Hog. It's great to be with you. Happy Friday, TGIF. Um, not so sure about today, but the weekend's looking pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Christy. Good morning, Hop Hog. Um, I, I have to hop on Joy's bandwagon and thank Joe for reminding me that June comes after May. That's really <laughs> helpful. That only came after Chris said once June 1st happens, then you're in June. So. <laughs> I thought that was the trend. All right, hot dog. We hope you're all doing well. Maria, what's going on? You know, I have to thank you also for reminding us about the end of May. My car inspection is up. Hey. <laughs> well, Maria, you're welcome. So, thank you very much for that little note there. Yeah. Um, I wonder. Hmm. All right. But anyway, um, I hope everybody has a great day. And good morning. Beautiful. Ruthie. And finally, it's and true. Fi and finally, it's Ruthie Pinkus. It's true. May does end with the beginning of June. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, so just putting that out there. Hi, Hop Hog. Happy to see you all. Um, that's it. It's Friday. I, I, you still have that feeling of weekends, even though it's Groundhog Day. But I still have that feeling of it's Friday. Yes. Yes, it is Friday. And it's Groundhog Day will be tomorrow as well. So it's Friday and tomorrow's Friday is also, also I guess. Um, all right. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to jump pretty much into the correspondence here this morning. Um, and then we don't have anything fancy planned. So Joe, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I'm actually going to do the, the drought report today. That's good. Yesterday didn't happen. Um, anyway, good morning. Happy Friday. Uh, there's not really much happening in sports. We just have some um, interesting bad blood in baseball right now between the players and the owners. Today, the MLB Players Association is going to be proposing its rebuttal to the owner's plan that came out earlier in the week, which basically includes a proposal to play 100 games and get their full prorated salaries, which is completely on the opposite spectrum of what the owners want because of um, – what's going on with money. Um, you know, when there aren't fans in the seats at sports events, it's going to be hard to justify paying people full salaries, but we'll see how it goes. It's, um, it's been very public and ugly, but I'm hoping it works out because I miss baseball. Um, that's about it. That, that happened over the last two days, which, you know, it's just not a lot going on, but if you're looking for something to watch tonight or over the weekend, I didn't see anything interesting really on tonight, but, um, if you're interested in the Lance Armstrong documentary on ESPN, that's on Sunday night, part two. I didn't watch part one, but I know a lot of people are intrigued by that story, so that's on. There's also UFC on tomorrow night, if you're interested in that. And on this day in history, in 1980, I kept it basketball for you, Chris. Larry Bird beat out Magic Johnson for the Rookie of the Year. That was a very controversial and competitive award. Um, so Bird won the award that year, but it started a very lengthy feud between the two. And happy birthday to Carmelo Anthony, the former Nick. He was born on this date in 1984. Yeah, he's 36, right? He and I are contemporaries. That is very good math right there, Chris. Very good. Now, um, Chris, today's trivia question is Nick's-centered because of Carmelo Anthony's birthday. All right. Carmelo Anthony is seventh on the all-time Nick's scoring list. Can you name the top six? Uh, all right. Anyone else can jump in, too. Somebody's I think, name. well, Ewing. Ewing is by far and away number one. Uh, Walt Frazier. Number two. Larry Bird. Larry Bird? He never played for the Knicks, but, you know. Oh, oh it's only the Knicks. <laughs> yes, only the Knicks. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be Pete Rose. <laughs> no. Pete, Pete Rose. Rose does not make this show today. What I got? I, Ewing, Frazier, Willis Reed. Reed is three. You got the top three. And I just He's killed a seven. fly. Was He's awesome. seventh. There's three others. Yeah, th uh, three others that are ahead of Carmelo. Uh, did you say Patrick Ewing? He did. He was number one. I think. Uh, Alan Houston? Nice. Wow. Way to go. There's two others after Houston and before Anthony that I don't know, even know if you'll get. Is it like 
Bill Bradley or uh, like Bill Bradley's you number said, two. You said Walt Frazier? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I think that's it for me. Yeah. Um Carl Braun is number five and Richie Guerin is number six. Never. Mm. Mm. Good pronunciation of Garen. Good for you. That's pretty good. Oh, wow. yeah. What I do, I'm pretty good with pronouncing last names. You know, <laughs> Cook, Ferrara, Agliari, <laughs> Ketel, Pincus. You nailed yeah. it. You nailed it, Joe. Um, that's that's the end of today's draw. One more quick one. Do you know the all-time Knicks leader in scoring percentage? Or field well, goal percentage? Field goal percentage. Uh, Charles Oakley. No, but I, it's a... Pretty close uh, guess, and I don't know the minimum number of games to qualify, but he wasn't around that long. Uh, Tyson Chandler. There you go. Good job. Back to you, Chris, and over to Joy. Excellent. Joy, go for it. Wow. I'm learning something new every day here on this morning show <laughs> related to random sports <laughs> questions. <laughs> okay, so um, on this day in history, May 29th, 1953, at 11.30 a.m., Edmund Hillary of New Zealand reached the summit of Mount Everest, was the first successful human being to hit that summit at 29,035 feet above sea level. So that's just a little tidbit in history. And today is National Paperclip Day. Now, you see I'm wearing a paper clip on my mm. uh, lapel here. And you may say, Joy, why are you wearing a paper clip on your lapel? Well, paper clips are not only for putting, you know, holding papers together. They're really great at uh, if your zipper breaks, for example, and you need to loop it through and zip something up. Um, women, we know that sometimes the hem rips and you need to hem up your dress or your pants. So paper clips come in handy. But what you may not have known is that during World War II, as a sign of resistance against the Nazis, the Norwegians began wearing paper clips. And because I'm half Norwegian, this is symbolic for me. Um, the Norwegians began wearing paper clips as a sign of sticking together. And um, in the 90s, the paper clip project um, began in schools across the United States to remember uh, the children of the Holocaust. And I believe it was around 2001, there was a middle school who collected over 30 million paper clips. And um, they are collected and housed in the Children's Holocaust Museum in Washington, DC. But as a symbol, if you take some paper clips and just simply start to put them together, you know, one paper clip can't do a lot, but many together form a chain. And so during this uh, horrific pandemic, we need to start to think about symbols of us coming back together again. We may not be able to physically be together, but there are ways that we can emotionally, spiritually um, be there for one another. And Hapal community now more than ever in this next month, we need to come together. Whatever things have been brewing, whatever um, differences ha uh, politically, philosophically, any of that needs to be pushed aside and our focus needs to be coming together as a community and, and supporting one another as we get through the remainder of this school year and focusing on our purpose and what's really important. And that's a big deviation from uh, this day in history, but because I'm over 50, I used my privilege. Have a great day. Thank you for invoking your privilege, Joy. That was very lovely. <laughs> um, Christy, what's the weather like for the weekend? Right now it's 66. It's going to be a high of 70s today, mostly cloudy all day. Um, sunrise was 524, sunsets at 816. But by tonight, it's going to be raining and overnight thunderstorms pretty much all night until through around 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Very humid outside, around 93%. Got it. So, <clears throat> Saturday, it's going to be mostly sunny, a little cloudy, but highs up in the 80s. It'll be a great day to get out of the night. And hope you have finished all your schoolwork and the kids can get out and socially distance and physically distance and get some sunshine. Sunday is also going to be um, sunny and high of 70. So um, 
I'm not sure if you're aware, but the space uh, SpaceX was supposed to be launched this week, earlier this week, but they had to postpone it because of the weather. So as of right now, tomorrow, and since the weather's looking great for this weekend, the space shuttle is set to launch tomorrow, May 30th at 320, uh, 322. Mm-hmm. So it's not that often that this happens. If you get a chance, try to watch it. And if the weather for some reason doesn't hold out tomorrow, it will be on Sunday at 3 o'clock. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, the circle looks empty, too. I don't know if you guys picked up, but I'm at the school today. The, start, the traffic through the circles, it, it's, uh, it's moving pretty well today. Um, all right, go for it. Maria, what's, uh, what's for dinner tonight? What's got the weekend plan? What do you got going on? Tonight I need to, um, I need to cook something good. Uh, I, think, I think I'm probably going to make rice balls tonight. Um, yesterday kind of threw me a little. I mean, we did have leftovers. Um, however... My son, you know, who I love spending time with him, um, was determined since he has the Sonic app that we go to Sonic because if you have the app, they have they had 50 cent corn dogs. So we went there. He bought a couple of corn dogs and then convinced me to have a Red Bull slushy with nerds in it. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, yeah, it, just even the look of it was odd because it was like this pinkish thing with all these little balls sitting in it. And I was like, Nick, what is that? And he's like, oh, the nerds. And I was like, okay. So I think. <laughs> Marie, that's, a, that's incredible. I thought when you went with corn dogs or whatever and then went to the slushy, Red Bull slushy with nerds. I've never even heard of that. That's yeah, incredible. Watermelon flavor. Um, if you have the app, he told me the half price. Um, That's amazing. Maria, my son made me actually drink um, a shake from Five Guys once that had chunky bacon in it. Um, it was like a salted caramel with chunky bacon. And he's like, Mom, try this. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah, well, here you are. For our kids, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know, Nick works at Dunkin'. Right, that would be like the maple bacon donut at Duck Donuts, though. Yeah, he brings those home periodically because Duck Donuts is right by Jersey Mike. So he came home with that with one of those donuts, and he was like, "Oh, this got bacon on it." And I'm like, "Okay, it's a donut." Um, yeah, so they, they're amazing, right? Um, yes, so anyway, so thank so- you for Denise Malinjoklo for introducing those to us. I have to say. <laughs> so. Anyway, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna make rice balls tonight. I think we're gonna go a little more uh, traditional route here. All right, good. We've, you've had rice balls before, and we talked about it a little bit. I'm impressed that you make them from scratch. What is about the rest of the weekend? It's gonna be hot tomorrow. Uh, Sunday's gonna be muggy. Is that if I remember correct? Um, you got any weekend plans? No, actually, actually, we do not. Um, I think we're gonna probably end up our pepper plants. The puppy decided to dig out of the garden. So I think those have to get replanted. Um, as far as like any kind of cooking, I don't know. It depends on the weather. Um, you know, I might just grill some stuff, you know, maybe grill some eggplant and, you know, see what's in the freezer. But that's as far as it goes. Got it. You got it. Um, well, thank you, Maria. Really appreciate it. Ruthie, in the world of art and music and everything expressive. Oh, wait. wait, I forgot. Oh, there you are. There you are. Okay, I'm on. You're in. Um, Go for it. Yeah, I have lots of good things, and I have some very exciting news, but I'm saving that for the end so that you'll all stay tuned in. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, So history. In 1951, Fanny Bryce died. If you want to know who Fanny Bryce is, she was one of the first female comedians um, in the Ziegfeld Follies. She's particularly important to me because... Um, she, she, her story is the story of Funny Girl, the musical, which was starring Barbara Streisand. She, that's a, that's an iconic musical performance on film. Um, and, and as a kid, that was like, it, it, and it is amongst my top, I would say five, Funny Girl. So Fanny Bryce died on this day. Um, and a little bit of information. My aunt lived in her Nikki Arnstein, which was her husband's apartment. Um, in Manhattan when I moved here. So, so that's pink as, pink as information. Um, In, in 
1963, Bob Fosse played Pal Joey in the New York City Center and really established himself as a performer. Um, e even though he had been performing and choreographing, he really did, did big stuff then. Um, so that's kind of historic. And then um, if, if you want something to watch this weekend, there's uh, live streaming on the show's Must Go On YouTube channel is the hairspray production that was done for television with uh, Harvey Firestein. And it, that's just a fabulous show. It's a really, really wonderful piece of theater. Um, it's, it's great for everybody. It's inclusive and the values that it shows are wonderful. It's, it's really a lovely, lovely piece of theater. Um, and I think I spoke about the Stars in the House, which is for the Actors Fund. It's a, it's a, a thing that they've been doing where they've been interviewing um, celebrities. Today, there's a reunion of the original cast of Dear Evan Hansen. And I'm saying that because all of my high school kids are all about Dear Evan Hansen. So there's a, a reunion today at two and at eight, you can watch it uh, live streaming on the Actors Fund. So now Actors Fund. I got yeah. I got to write down all these things that you share. There's too many good things. I, can't, I didn't even I didn't even know the show must go on was a thing. Yeah, 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 that's uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber kind of started that, and weekly they um, they live stream different shows. So he's done Cat Cats, <laughs> the original Cat uh, Broadway production of Cats. They've done Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, and they went through a lot of Andrew Lloyd Webber Webber stuff. But now they're into putting other things. The other thing that's really cool tonight I, I, that I have to add is um, if you you know who George Takai is. Um, uh, I think so. I, um, he, he's done a ton of stuff, but he did a program, a thing on Broadway called Allegiance uh, last year. And it's the story of Japanese, a uh, Japanese American family in an internment camp um, after World War II. Mm. It did very, very well, um, had Lea Salonga and some wonderful people in it. And tonight on Broadway HD, um, they're showing it for free. So you can see that Broadway production tonight at 7.30. Cool. So Very that's cool. all stuff. But the exciting, exciting news, the Hop Hog Theater news that I'm about to break today is we have two fabulous nominees that are currently um, a part of the Roger Reese Awards. So let me explain. Um, every spring around this time, uh, every spring for the past decade, Dozens of high school and theater students in New York City and the surrounding areas gather and they compete for what's known as the Roger Reese Awards. Um, it's named in honor of a celebrated actor who passed away in 2015 and he was really, Roger Reese did a million, a million Broadway shows and was one of those people that people remember as an actor's actor and, and a, he, the fans just loved him. He was just a kind, giving mm. person. Anyway, um, so Vincent Girardi and Katie Dulce hey. are, part, are part of this competition. Um, the winners of the Roger Reese Awards are taken to the Jimmy Awards. And the Jimmy Awards are national high school musical theater awards. And they are truly a big deal. They get large scholarships for college. Um, and as well as they, you know, they're, they're all over the place. The last Jimmy Award, two years ago, the Jimmy Award winner was seen on the Jimmy Awards and actually was cast right after the original Evan Hansen left. He became the next Evan Hansen. So that's the kind of clout this thing has. Um, so two of our kids are going to be competing and it's never virtual. It's usually done in a Broadway theater. However, this year, because of everything that's going on, it is the competition is actually taking place on this coming Monday, June first at seven thirty p.m. and you can get it on um, where did where is it the Broadway Educational wait a minute is, oh yeah the Broadway Education Alliance YouTube channel Broadway Education Alliance YouTube channel I think we should post this on the classroom because all of Hop Hog should be watching these two guys are, have really been putting in time virtually. So they've been actually having rehearsals through Zoom with this organization. I think the pr performance itself, the production, they'll be in the probably the opening and closing numbers. And I don't know how they're going to do that. But um, 
but Vincent and Katie will be a part of it and they're competing. And um, it should be about an hour long and Hop Hog should support. That's cool. To see them because they're, they're great talents and great kids of ours. Yeah, that's super cool. Uh, th they were both on the show yesterday and just got the, the maturity level that came from both of them was so, so impressive. And, you know, now seeing them in multiple performances, you know, their performances stand out even among uh, a whole performance that stands out. So that's, uh, there's no surprise about the two of them. Kudos to you too, Ruthie. That's awesome. You got two okay. students. Yeah. I'm Have we had excited. students get this far before? Well, we, we have, we, I nominate kids every year. And then this year they asked me to nominate a certain number of kids and then they pull out too. Um, Vince actually placed as first runner up last year. Wow. So yeah. So, um, so this is his second year going in. Um, and it, it, it's, it's great. I mean, it's, it's so impressive. It, you know, these kids work so hard and, yes. and it's nice to see them get, you know, the, these opportunities. So I'm psyched. Very cool. And yeah. uh, I, I guess if you send me some info, we'll get it out today in some way or another. Yeah, and I, think, I think actually, I think there may be a horizons with the Oh, perfect. Perfect. That's so. even more perfect. Great. Yeah. Um, very good. Well, guys, I think, uh, you know, we um, didn't have any special segments and we still, still filled the half hour, just good TV we got going on. So let's go, let's round it out with some shout outs. I think, uh, Today, a, a little bit building off of yesterday, you know, um, the tension is rising in, in the country in a lot of ways. And I think um, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some advice I got at some point was, um, uh, you know, people, t people tend to get angry and, and frustrated when they feel like their, their world beneath them is, is, doesn't have a solid foundation. And then it's, so it's our responsibility is to figure out how to get the foundation underneath us so that, you know, we, we don't attack. Um, and so I think if we could just all kind of take a breath and, and think about what we need to do to put to get the foundation we need under our, our feet. And that that looks different for everybody. So whatever you need to do, try to find some foundation this weekend, um, because, you know, the, the times ahead are still going to be stressful. And we, we um, hopefully we, we don't uh, get nasty during the time as well. All right, Joe. All right. Um, thanks, Chris. My shout out. Uh, pretty much any day we can goes to first responders, anyone who's on the front lines helping fight this um, and help get us back to normal. So thank you for all you do. Um, and I just hope, shout out to everyone. I hope you just have an enjoyable weekend and we'll see you next week. Good stuff. Joy. Yeah, so <clears throat> I just want to share this quote that I found. Um, it says, sometimes the bad things that happen in our lives put us on the path to the best things that will ever happen to us. So my message to you, Hop Hog, is to keep keeping on. Keep the faith. We're going to get through this. Believe in, in all that you can uh, and know that this will pass. I want to give a big shout out to um, all of our students because you are the reason why we do what we do. We care about you. We miss you so much. We love you. And we are excited to see um, who you become in the next part of your journey. Have a great weekend, everybody. Beautiful. Christy. Hi, I'm going to give a big shout out to all the students here in Hop Hog. Um, I know you're still pushing through, still doing your work, and it would be very easy to give up and let go. But I'm so proud that you keep pushing on and, and keep communicating with the teachers. I um, also want to give a big shout out to the clerical that have been in school on site, um, socially distancing, but really preparing to um, get all of our end of the year needs taken care of. Good stuff. Maria. Yeah, so I'm going to give a big shout out to everybody who so far has been pushing through this. Um, we are succeeding. And I believe if we continue to have hope, faith, and keep pushing, that we will be there shortly. Excellent. Ruthie. Yeah, I guess uh, all those good things that all of you are saying, I really, uh, I, I guess my shout out goes to Hop Hog and the Hop Hog community, um, as well as all the other people that are staying safe and keeping peace and, and taking care of themselves and just being thankful for what grateful for what we have beautiful and uh and good luck i guess monday monday you said was the um at 7 30. 
Cool. Yep. So, so take a look at that at Horizons. Uh, Katie and Vincent, good luck. That's really cool. Uh, glad you have the opportunity to compete still. That's excellent. And uh, we'll be watching on Monday for it. Um, and then I think we'll, we'll probably want to touch base with those two after the fact, and, you know, as we get further into June to kind of just touch base on a morning show. So can you talk to their agents, Ruthie, see if they're available in the morning and, and, and they'll, they'll be, no, have them. I have am. Your, are you kidding? Oh, so have, have your people talk to my people. Okay. We'll figure it out. There you go. All right. Uh, awesome guys. Really good stuff. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a wonderful uh, weekend. We will see you in June. Sounds good. Bye. Have Bye. Yeah, and because we like you so much, we're giving you the rest of the month off. <laughs> starting at starting in the afternoon today. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna know we'll come since we won't be on the morning show. Uh, I think that's right. I think we're that's good. for the summer, right? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna continue to do this. Season, or can we just do like maybe we should do reruns for a couple of weeks? So I love the rerun idea. That's it. Rerun right. is a good idea. Yeah, people are gonna season one. Season one. I love COVID it. Season one. Is this only season one? I think I think we're up to like we've been out or, seventy some days. Every school day that we've been out, we've put a video I up. You, but I feel like I've been binging. Yep. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, all right, that's awesome, guys.